Hello everyone, welcome to the new video of the classical game series and um, today we will be looking at the game between Tarash and Mendelssohn played in 1879. So Tarash was white, e4, c5, knight c3. This is what it looks like um, a closed Sicilian, but let's see e6, knight f3, knight c6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4. All of the sudden, we have an open Sicilian. So, if white plays two knight c3, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will be a closed Sicilian. He can change his mind and open up the position. After a few more moves, like this, a6, bishop e2, knight g7, bishop e3, knight g6, castles, bishop e7, f4, castles. We have a position that doesn't really look like it was played uh, some 130 plus years ago. If someone would give you this position and ask you when was this played, you could say, well, it was in the last 50 years or something. It could be even played today. But what do you know? Even 135 years ago, they knew something about chess, I guess. And here, white has to choose. He can go bishop f3 with a positional approach, guarding the e4 pawn, putting pressure along this diagonal, and uh, maybe stopping this pawn to advance. And playing basically against this pawn, or maybe switching later to the king side. Or he can do what he did in a game and play rook f3 with the idea of switching that rook to the king side. I mean, he's already on the king side, but to the h file and looking at this pawn. This is probably more interesting. And now, uh, probably the best thing for black is to just develop his queen side. So play pawn to b5, oops, sorry, pawn to b5, then develop the bishop and uh, make some influence since this pawn is a little bit weak. Or who knows, maybe even get to the white king if the position opens up in the center. But he chose something else. He played f5. And this move can be played, but if you play it, you have to play very accurately. Because if you look a little bit here, there is a possibility that this diagonal will open up very soon. And uh, if that happens, then the bishop can get there and force the king to the corner, and after something like rook at the right moment going to h5, it can be really dangerous. So you can get away with f5, but you have to be very very accurate. So <clears throat> white took, and now, because there is, if, if black just takes, he will do what I said, he will open this diagonal and the bishop will come there. So, so he exchanged on d4 first, and white took, and now um, black should not take here with the pawn, although that's exactly what he did. Uh, he should keep this diagonal closed, because once this bishop gets there with a check, that will force the king to the corner, and uh, then it will be very dangerous. Also, once the bishop gets there, uh, the d5 square is also available. Actually, once this pawn moves, then the knight can hop in, and it's not only that white has a possibility of kingside attack, but he also has a central control, so he can combine those two and make... Um, it's a, it's a, it would be a winning position almost for white. So, how not to open this diagonal? Well, black can try with the rook, to take with the rook on f5, but that's not good, because after bishop d3, attacking the rook, the rook retreats, why just go rook h3? And look at now, this bishop is looking there, this guy is looking there, 
the rook is already in his position. The queen is very close, and uh, actually there is also a threat of rook taking on h7. Let's say uh, white play, black plays something like this, and then take on h7, and when black retakes, just jump in with the queen, the only square, and after bishop g6, black is toasted. So let's go back. Of course, if your house is burning, you're not going to water the flowers, so probably black would not play b5. But what will he play? Is It's very hard for him to do anything. And uh, let's say he tries something like this, takes this pawn and says, OK, I'm attacking the rook, I'm attacking the bishop. Well, white can just take on h7, and if, if you take here, he will take on g7 first, and this is just a lost position. So, rook takes f5 was not good, but if rook takes f5 is not good, and pawn takes f5 is not good, which I said, and the game will prove that, what is good then? Well, black had a move, and that move would be knight to h4. With this move, he is attacking the rook, and if the rook moves somewhere, let's say here, then he can take on f5 with the knight. This knight will be a good blockader of the position. Okay, the rook g3 was not precise because now white is 4. But anyway, the point is the knight is blocking this diagonal and this pawn didn't move, so this diagonal didn't open up. But um, black missed all that and he carelessly took on f5 with the pawn. White immediately took advantage but play, by playing bishop c4 check. King went here, and now, before moving his rook here to make final threats against the king, white first plays knight d5, protecting the f4 pawn, and getting ready to get there with the rook. Although, probably it was possible to go immediately with the rook, but this move is just so strong. The pawn is protected, and there is a threat of bishop coming here. Um, black didn't respond so well. He just missed that bishop b6 is a threat. But even if he would notice that, there is not much that he can do. And now, look at this. Bishop comes in. And if the queen moves, all of a sudden, she's trapped. There is no escape for her. Actually, she can go back, but then you just take the rook, and she has to go back again, and you play rook up, plus with the dominant position. So, um, black decided to give up the piece with this check, but that's just not going to help him, and he's completely lost here. Um, but we will look the game to the end, because there is a really nice combination. So now two bishops of whites are attacked, but he removes one with the attack on the queen, so he gains time to save the other bishop as well. Once the queen moves, the bishop goes back. And now white is a clear piece up. He has a dominant knight, and he's ready to checkmate black. Black developed, bishop b7, and now finally rook h3. Um, black decided to exchange this knight, but now I suggest that you pause the video and try to find a beautiful combination played by Tarash. Okay. Um, I will now show you. Probably you have found it. The first move of the combination is rook takes h7 check, destroying king's cover. There is only one move available for black, that is to recapture. And now queen h5 check. Again, king has only one square, but now Bishop takes d5 check, uh, black blocks, and queen takes knight. Um, white is threatening to win decisive material here, but also he is threatening something else. After black defended, a cool move, bishop to d4, and all of a sudden the g7 spot 
is the future destination of this queen and that will be the checkmate because this bishop is pinning the f7 rook and there is nothing that black can do he can get away from the pin but after queen h6 taking the bet of this pin we can just checkmate him so actually after bishop d4 Mendelssohn resigned a nice uh, combination of finish of the game and um, a good overall play by white and a slight mistake by black when playing f5 and following up with that move. That's it for this video and uh, see you soon.